right now we are at a depth of 3,275 meters, looking at an incredible black smoker hydrothermal vent chimney. That black fluid coming out there is likely between 300 and 400 degrees centigrade. These ecosystems are literally islands or oases amongst what is, I mean, it's really cliche and the deep sea is definitely not a desert, but relatively islands of abundant fauna, islands of life in what is a usually desert-like deep sea floor. Oh, this is so cool. What about 20, 27 journey. meters high? 30, 30 meters, meters high. What are hydrothermal vents? Where are they located? What purpose do they serve? Can we tie them to the rivers from Eden? We do not have to because Job did it for us. And you are gonna love this. Wait till you see what we found. Then, Second Esdras confirms this. And really, Genesis actually does too, especially when it is abundantly clear that the Gihon River has to surround the whole land of Ethiopia, which is coast to coast in Africa. Therefore, it has to surround the whole continent. Therefore, where is that river? On the bottom of the ocean floor. And the Pisan River, which surrounds the Philippines. Another channel says it's in the Philippines, right? Well, it has to surround the whole land of the Philippines, which puts it where? On the bottom of the ocean floor. This isn't rocket science, really, when you just... Pay attention to the Bible and follow what it says. It has to match scripture or throw it out. This does. Now, these are the source cause of the great flood of Noah. The fountains of the great deep, which are within the rivers from Eden. System and found nowhere else, pretty much. Now, how can we know that? By the end of this video, you will have enough evidence to support this from scripture, from science, from extra biblical books even. However, this is a theory that is developing. As you see, we've put out multiple videos on this already. But it is certainly gelling together as very, very strong. And there is no one out there who has disproven this, nor even put a little tiny dent in it. And I don't know about you, but... We have yet to find a single coherent theory on the rivers from Eden otherwise. Because, see, it has to actually fit the origin of the narrative, the Bible. This one does. Of course, some will say not, but they have to say more than not. uh We even had someone recently going back through quotes we use from research over four years ago trying to pick apart Solomon's Gold series. Oh no, actually, not true. They didn't watch Solomon's Gold series, but they're commenting on it and say we didn't prove anything. Uh, except she didn't watch it, so how would you know? Uh, you wouldn't. Now, we find the land of gold, Ophir, in the Philippines in Solomon's Gold series. We released a 100 Clues series, which this is a part of as well as Solomon's Gold series. And in doing so, we quickly responded with the original sources for these, and even updated some of the slides to make the sources larger because there was a complaint from the same person that they were too small to read. Okay, fair. Fine. We made them larger. So we've been working on trying to do this better and better, and as we're now putting together a book, these sources are becoming ooh, incredibly strong. Now, we've always researched them, and we've always verified those things that we use. That's just nonsense for someone to claim otherwise. We don't always put the page number and original source on the screen, but that doesn't mean we don't verify it. But we do put a source on the screen, which is far better than most YouTube videos, especially those that are making things up. And there's another one that does that constantly and leads to China and Russia. Now, we even created a four-page source sheet for the original history video from four years ago, and that is available under that video, part six of Solomon's Gold series, and on our website and Facebook. Now, this is a YouTube video, though not a book, 
nor a scientific or archaeological journal. It's just not. Sorry. And up until recently, we did not provide, nor is it customary to do so in the slightest for YouTube, a bibliography of sources for every video, though we do source each slide virtually, much better than most. We are not scientists, nor historians, nor have we ever claimed to be, but we can read, and we can reason, and we can hear from Yahuwah. And one must admit, even if they do not like this theory, which they don't have to, it's okay. Or if they wish to disagree for whatever reason doesn't fit their paradigm, their worldview, whatever, that's fine. But what they cannot say is that this is not a well-formed theory nevertheless, because it definitely is. Now, further support, let's begin with scripture, then science, and then extra-biblical support. Genesis 7:11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up. If anybody ever tells you it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and that caused the flood, that is ignorance in Scripture because it never says that. Yes, there was 40 days until the ark was lifted. It continues for 150 that is not scripture. Now, here's what it says. And the windows of heaven were opened. So the windows of heaven were opened, but what was the first cause? The fountains of the great deep were broken up. These are the two causes of the great flood of Noah. Not a mystery, nor has it ever been. These fountains of the great deep were broken up. They exploded probably into space or similar, and mega tsunamis came rushing out, crashing into what would have been known as Middle Earth, according to Lord of the Rings, forming what we call the continental shelves today, which is why they match the very same shape and pattern as the river from Eden itself. Just look at the mid-ocean ridge, and notice that the continents match that shape. <laughs> and it's obvious, but don't expect science to see it. Now, we will address Pangea, or really the doctrine of the Seder god Pan, and his Nephilim breeder called Mother Earth Gaia, which is the original root of that actual word, by the way. Even according to Wikipedia, just search it online, search for Pangea, and it comes up Pangaea. Hmm. We'll do that in another video. But let's get to it. The book of Job tells us where these fountains and the rivers from Eden are found. Check this out. Now, this is awesome. Generally, the KJV translators did a great job, really, in translating the Bible into English. But let us all remember the origin of this is Hebrew. The Bible was written in Hebrew and Greek the New Testament in Greek, of course, and there are far more extant sources today than what they had available in the 1500s and 1600s. What d they did is amazing, largely, but even they recognized, not perfect, as they put some things in parentheses, for instance, and when you see that, it means that they are unsure of the translation. That's what that means. They're questioning their own translation. Today, using tools available to every common man. You don't have to be a pastor or a priest or any of those things, a seminarian, to read the Bible and understand it for yourself. There are resources available to dig deeper into the Hebrew origin of these words for full clarity and understanding. When we do that with this verse, it really comes to light. Job 28.4 here, Job is talking about the pre-flood world in context, which he does more than once. And he does again later in the passage, which we'll cover in a few minutes. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant. The flood? What flood? Noah's flood. He's talking about the pre-flood world here. Now, we just read the flood broke out from the fountains of the great deep. What do they inhabit? Hmm, the rivers from Eden. How do we know? Read further. Next. 
even the waters forgotten of the foot. Wow. What are the forgotten waters from before the flood? The rivers from Eden. Why are they forgotten? They're no longer in view. They're covered over by the flood. That's logic. The rivers from Eden are located at the foot. That's what it says. That's what Job says. Or on the bottom. The bottom of what? What are they covered over by? The new world ocean formed by the flood. Wow. There it is right there. Job is coming right out and saying it, but we're not done. Let's finish the passage and understand it in context. They, that would be the rivers from Eden, are dried up. Uh Uh-oh. We'll address it. They are gone away from men. What does this mean? Now, so it says dried up, so they cannot be at the bottom of the ocean floor and be dried up then, right? Well, actually, this does not say dried up. The word never means dried up in Hebrew in any of the other passages in all of Scripture. This is the only one time it is interpreted that way. This is it. The word could mean dried up in a sense that it's no longer functioning the way that it did. You could say that. But it does not mean dried up. It's never used in Scripture to mean dried up. This is the only place, and the word is used a number of times. But certainly not in this context. Because the translators did not understand, and we understand that they didn't, and it's okay that they didn't. You know, knowledge is increasing, my friends. The word in Hebrew is dalal, which means brought low. Oh, what? What did we just read in context? These waters are forgotten and at the foot, or what? Brought low. Exact match, perfect word, and exactly what it should mean. Now, That is a perfect fit. The other definitions of the word also fit right in as it is not equal to, to what? To the ocean which now covers these rivers. It is emptied, fails, or impoverished and made thin. Well, again, does that mean dried up? No. In the sense of no longer flowing completely, or being broken, not functioning the way that it did prior to the flood from its origin. That's all. But all of them really do fit. But this is not saying that they're dried up, indeed. Now, we love the clarity from Jesenius' lexicon. It's to the right, bottom right. He really nails us down. To hang down. To be pendulous like a pendulum, to swing, to wave. See, those first two, they still mean to hang, to be low. It's brought low. It's it's still saying that. Now, look at these analogies. As a bucket hanging in a well. Now, a bucket in a well. So, if it is, because earlier in the passage, where is it? It is on the bottom. It's at the foot. So if the bucket is at the foot of the well, okay, it's filled with water down there, and it sits on the bottom, right where the rivers from Eden are in the ocean. Is that not exactly what we have here? Now, that would be the ridge and trench system in regards to the ocean or the rivers from Eden. Waving to and fro like a palm branch denotes movement, and these rivers still move not only water and sediment, but they shake. And that comes from the next part of the verse. Let's go through that. They are gone away from men. Now, once again, that is a true statement, as no one sees the rivers from Eden today. So not necessarily a bad translation, but not an exact match either in the Hebrew. This Hebrew word, nuwa, ooh, almost sounds like Noah, hmm, for gone away blows the lid off all of this passage 
and one can really see what is going on here. To quiver, totter, shake, reel, stagger, etc. All the definitions pretty much the same. What does this? Is this talking about earthquakes and volcanoes? The shaking of the earth? Oh my! Now, translators did not know about the ridge and trench system back then. They weren't found until the 1970s, so cut them some slack. We are in the days of increasing knowledge now. They were exiting the Dark Ages back then. So be fair, but also don't condemn a valid interpretation of an old ancient concept and call it somehow new, because what we're offering in this video is not new. The science is fairly new, but it is not a new concept at all, because Job says it. And he wrote before Moses. How about that? At least that's what a lot of scholars believe. Now, for Job is clearly showing this is not new. We are just now coming to understand exactly what he meant. We've read this before. We didn't see it either. We are nobody. This is Job's revelation, not ours. So where does the earth shake? Oh, this is good. What is the epicenter of the Earth's volcanic activity? Now, some would say the Ring of Fire, but where is the Ring of Fire? The Ring of Fire is right on the Pisan River. It's in the rivers from Eden. Now, many may not realize, but it is not up here on Middle Earth, not even on the islands, Indonesia, and areas like that. No, 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 that's not where the most volcanic activity occurs. Yes, we have active volcanoes all over the world, and we report those, so they're in plain view. But those in the ocean deep are not. Not just in the ocean, but specifically the deep, the mid-ocean ridge and trenches, or the rivers from Eden. Let's read. The main hub of volcanic activity is an area where eruptions are undetectable. The mid-ocean ridge is an immense volcanic mountain chain. No, it's not. It's a river, but that's okay. That encircles the planet beneath the sea. The chain is more than 30,000 miles, actually more than 40,000, but uh, who's counting? Long and rises an average of 18,000 feet, 5.5 kilometers above the sea floor. But, okay, so... This is the spot where Earth's plates spread apart as new crust bubbles up, something they've never proven, never once. We have nothing that says that actually happens like that, causing much of the Earth's volcanic eruptions. That part is what we're going for here. Now, there are more volcanoes here than on land. There is a source and link to this article in Live Science, or Live Science, I guess, uh, at the bottom of the screen. Here's another. According to NOAA's Oceans Today magazine, scientists believe that 80% of the volcanic eruptions on Earth take place where? In the ocean. Most of these volcanoes are thousands of feet deep and difficult to find. Where are they? They are in the rivers from Eden, the mid-ocean ridge and trenches. The deep, especially when you're looking at thousands of feet deep, that's where that's talking about. So this is the source of most of the earthquake activity on Earth. 80%! Are you kidding me? All coming from the rivers from Eden, which Job says, shake, totter. Imagine that. Let's look at Job one more time here. Here's our interpretation based on the actual Hebrew. Job 28.4 The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant. The fountains of the great deep inhabit the rivers from Eden. Even the waters forgotten of the foot. Rivers from Eden at the foot of the bottom of the ocean. That's what that's referring to. They are brought low. They are shaking men. So they're at the bottom of the ocean, shaking men on earth. And we have 
an exact match to Scripture here. Exact. How did Job possibly know that? Because this was revealed to him. Again, there is no record that science knew in 1611 about these foundations of the Great Deep. No idea back then that the rivers from Eden were right there on the bottom of the ocean floor. No knowing about this cosmology that was not discovered until recently in the 1970s. So be fair to former scholars and translators, yet in modern times, citing those guys on this topic is fine to look at. Certainly, let's all read their opinions. We sure sure do. There's no doubt about it. But likely, they're being formed in the wrong paradigm. This is why all other River from Eden theories head away from Scripture, because they have to to make them work. Even science, they deviate, (laughs) because they require water to flow uphill at times. In most of these theories out there on these rivers from Eden, and worse, completely ignoring where the Bible says these rivers must be. It doesn't fit Scripture, throw it out. It's time to know. But this is not all Job says as he revisits the topic again. A few verses later, and this one scholars did pick up on, even got that he was describing what they call, not us, what they call, underground streams or rivers. What? Yep. Let's see. To the left is the screenshot from another channel who attempted to challenge this theory, yet never made one coherent point, and we obliterated all of their argument, including their supposed theory, which wasn't even a good guess. For that, we are, of course, called false prophets. (laughs) Yet they're wrong and proven wrong on every single point, all of them. So, yeah, who's the false prophet? Now, they don't have to agree. We don't require that. But, of course, they also do not have to change Strong's Concordance and fraud to read with a new definition in order to try to make their sad theory work. Yet they did that. We caught them. Watch Hittichel 2, and you will find we show that. Now, while having the top left screen up, they challenged everyone that in response to us, there is no support ever for underground streams in the definition of this Hebrew word, river, doesn't exist nowhere, ever, 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 until they go to the next screen, which they don't read, and clearly haven't read. They can't even read their own screen, because on the second screen, which is to the bottom left, there it is, pointed out with the arrow, In their own definition, from their own screen, they just aren't reading. Where is this passage found? Where scholars are rendering this word nahar, rivers. And they're rendering it as, specifically in Job 28.11, underground streams or rivers. Streams, rivers are interchangeable. What is not interchangeable is Fountains. What is not interchangeable is geysers, snow caps. None of these things are rivers. There are Hebrew words for those things, and that doesn't fit. Yet they try that too. Job 28, 10, and 11 will start the verse before. He, Yahuwah, this is a creation narrative, cutteth out rivers, Nahar, among the rocks. Now, is Yahuwah the Colorado River that cuts out and carves out the Grand Canyon over millions of years? No, that doesn't even work because it would require water to flow uphill when you look at the science behind that. It's unscientific, doesn't belong in textbooks. The first time the word is simply interpreted rivers accurately in this passage, okay? But this isn't the one that we're getting to, but we want to show you that. Yahuwah carved the rivers from Eden with his hand. The other rivers on earth today are actually created by, largely, by water receding from the flood and by um, rain, snow melt, and just the natural path of water. And yes, some carving out certainly probably has happened, but not over millions of years. So, let's move on. 
And his eye seeth every precious thing. Yes, it does, including you and everyone out there. Seems like an allusion to hidden, something hidden, right? Perhaps hidden rivers, since that's what this passage is about. But we can't say that for certain, so we won't draw a conclusion on that portion yet. He bindeth the floods from overflowing. Now, that's odd. BlueLetterBible.org shows that word floods in Hebrew is still the word nahar, the word for river. So why would they now interpret this as floods? Why would this be the case? Why not just put river again, right? Well, the context is clearly different. These are the origin of the flood. Thus, floods come out of them, or at least did before the flood or at the time of the flood. But he sent this rainbow as a sign that he would never do that again, remember? Thus he binds them. This is a flood narrative here. They will not overflow again because he promised so. What rivers are the source of the floods or flood? The rivers from Eden. And where do many scholars place them? Well, they render these as underground or one could say underwater streams or river, same word. The other passage is super definitive. There's no doubt about that. This one, not as much, but together, Job is definitely identifying the rivers from Eden on the bottom or at the foot of the ocean. And the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light, is the next part of the passage. Now, that is prophetic. And that is exactly what is happening right now and unfolding. These are now coming into focus for the first time in history that we can find. The rivers from Eden are where? On the bottom of the ocean floor. And what inhabitants are there inside which cause the flood? Well, those would be the fountains of the great deep, according to scripture, which science calls hydrothermal vents. They indeed found the rivers from Eden in the fountains of the great deep. More science, though. This is a good breaking point in this video, as there is a lot to disseminate. In the next, we will cover the science behind this and more extra-biblical references, so don't miss it. It should be right behind this one. Again, watch our Rivers from Eden theory for this full theory before even commenting would be wise. We always get such comments, and again, you really can't unless you've watched the theory. Otherwise, it's about nothing. Of course, watch the full case, and then go out and prove all things for yourself, and hold fast that which is Good. Thank you for watching Solomon's Gold series, our 100 Clues, the Philippines is Ophir, and Flood series, as this serves as all three. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Share this video with others. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen Space Original. And check out our website at thegodculture.com if ever YouTube plays games and takes our channel down or videos or whatever. We will have them available on the website and we will continue no matter what. Though things are going okay right now. Our email is thegodculture at gmail.com and we are scheduling conferences now for 2020. We just need hosts. Got a big one coming up we're about to announce. We're excited about. Keep your eyes out for an announcement on book details coming very soon. Thank you all for your prayers, your comments, encouragement, and support in every way, especially those on Patreon who have been faithful. Salamat po. This has made a tremendous difference. We are humbled and overwhelmed, and we love you all. Ya bless to all. Thank you.